Hola, bon dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream. I hope this uh, finds you well this morning. And uh, what we intend to do, if you've not joined us before, is uh, give you the uh, update on the facts and figures, really, uh, as far as the uh, coronavirus COVID-19 goes here in Portugal. Obviously, in English, for those uh, who prefer the service or need the service in the uh, English language and who are based here or concerned about what's going on in Portugal. So let me, without uh, further ado, go to, well, we haven't done this for a little while, actually. Let's go to the big picture uh, around the world at the moment. And uh, we do this courtesy of worldometers.info. And uh, the interesting figures here, I mean, let me just start with the kind of headline figures. Uh, across the world, uh, there you see uh, 537,178 coronavirus cases globally uh, approaching, well, just over 24,000 deaths there. And recoveries, uh, it's always good to see that figure, 124,440 recoveries. Uh, obviously, you can check this out for yourself at worldometers.info. Um, we will go to specifically to Portugal in just a moment with the DGS, the uh, health service website. But uh, you can arrange these figures here to show what's going on in the world. So you'll see there that the, the largest report of new cases in, is in Germany, uh, followed by Israel and uh, Russia there. Uh, and if I organize it in terms of total cases, you'll see that uh, now the United States is uh, has gone ahead of China and Italy. But uh, it gives you an idea of what's going on around the world, uh, which uh, on the one hand m might be useful and helpful to get a perspective, but also it's, uh, it makes for chilling reading as well. So let's go specifically to Portugal. Uh, and you can see there the figures slightly different, I think, to what I might show you in a moment because they kind of play a game of catch up. But you get the idea anyway um, of what's going on and the, uh, it, the, the its growth. I mean, there's no getting away from that. But the it, over the days and weeks, it's good to get a sense of you know how we are managing or not to flatten that curve that people speak about. So total cases in Portugal, according to Worldometers, is uh, just over three and a half thousand. 60 people have died in Portugal. Uh, however, 43 uh, have recovered. 61 remain in uh, intensive care. And our figure of total deaths per million is six, which uh, as grim and a tragedy is for those individuals. Um, that's still uh, a low figure, mercifully. So let's go now to the... Uh, I uh, Actually, incidentally, I should say, yeah, good morning to you, wherever you are. Um, uh, when we've done the... Uh, facts and figures as, as it were um there's time always going to make time so that you can just say who you are where you are and i can put your comments up on the screen so just please do tell me uh, where you are this morning how's it going for you day two of mitigation quite a few days now into the state of emergency and uh, obviously reconsidering the renewal the president is reconsidering the renewal of the state emergency to take us beyond the uh, second third of april so let us have a look now specifically at the dgs website uh, here in portugal if you've not seen this before you would go to uh, covid19.min-sao.pt and or just type in uh, dgs portugal into your search engine and you'll soon come to this which is the overall and current situation in portugal and uh, yeah the world numbers and the um the specific country numbers are pretty much uh, in line at the moment there, as you, as you can see, uh, 43 recoveries, 60 deaths. <clears throat> Excuse me. Always really self-conscious when I cough now. And uh, if you uh, weren't with us in the last couple of days, you'll see that what's been added here is the um, breakdown uh, kind of locally, regionally, uh, Concello, um, uh figures uh, here to... Uh, Oh, that's sorry, Concello based and regional based. Oh, you can, I didn't realize that, but you could do both. You can go to the Concello based, that's, that's useful, and also regions as well uh, to see what's going on in your area or another area of interest. And then graphically over to the left here, you'll see as well the hotspots in Portugal too. So this is quite useful and helpful to get a picture of what's going on. And, and yeah, the number there of people actually in intensive care is uh, 61 currently at the moment so that's the picture for portugal right now um uh, what i'd like to add to that and you know that's uh, if you if you join us on a regular basis you'll get the sense that uh, we go from you know the hard facts to, to more subjective 
stuff and you know what better way to do that than to go to the papers and just a couple of things stories that i'd like to bring your attention to uh in the portugal news and then after that there's time if you want to talk about specifically about your personal situation uh where you are on the ground in portugal we'll do that and we'll get much more sociable and community based towards the end of this live stream but i won't hang about if nobody has anything to say we will move on and we'll just be back again tomorrow to bring you up to date with the, the facts as, uh, as as best as i see them and can share them with you but um <clears throat> it was reported yesterday in the portugal news that the government says supermarkets are back to normal secretary of state for commerce joao torres said yesterday sorry yeah you said yesterday that recent data shows things are back to normal at the country's supermarkets now i know this varies from place to place it has to and he must have an overview of what's going on because people are still uh, concerned and complaining about supplies in some shops i've seen on social media but generally speaking i think this is good to know that um as it says here, this is in sharp contrast to the onset of the coronavirus outbreak in Portugal some 15 days ago. Good heavens, is it only 15 days ago when there was a rush for the shelves and panic shopping, uh, which was, you know, uh, an annoying but understandable response because people were very scared. But it looks now, uh, according to Joao Torres, uh, as reported in the Portugal news here, that turnouts are back to normal following a peaking consumption two weeks ago and obviously as i said that will vary from place to place uh let's uh add uh stephanie's this is what we need um just to connect us up across the country um stephanie saying uh hello from tavira my feeling still is too much traffic noise yeah it's interesting isn't it that uh, given that we're in lockdown that there still seems to be a lot a hell of a lot of activity uh, i wish everyone would just stay home except for necessities so that we can keep everyone healthy especially the critical service workers who we desperately need to be healthy over the coming weeks i'm not sure why there's still so much construction work happening yeah as it was saying in you my native uk you know that 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 continues and it, and uh, you it looks like you know somebody needs to kind of step in at a higher level uh, because uh, th that's an industry where people you know, a lot of self-employed people who need to work, who need to pay their bills, and will probably continue to do so out of fear unless they're told not to. Uh, the longer people continue to be out and about, the longer the crisis continues. The faster we stay home, the faster we can flatten the curve. Thank you for that, Stephanie. Uh, an update from Tavira. Yeah, where there still appears to be too much traffic noise and people continuing to work in construction there. Thank you, Stephanie. Let's share now uh, another story from the uh, Portugal News article i hate using the word story um i i pre much prefer to say um article or some reporting from the portugal news uh this uh, sobering again i suppose a uh, portugal government sees 2020 recession due to coronavirus outbreak again a story from yesterday portugal's finance minister said on wednesday that all scenarios pointed to an economic recession. I don't know that comes as a surprise to anybody. Uh, helped by solid economic growth of 2.2% last year, Portugal earlier on Wednesday reported a budget surplus, surplus in 2019. First budget surplus in 45 years of the country's democratic history. And then look, <clears throat> Portugal has uh, 2,995 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 43 reported deaths. That was uh, as of yesterday. Far below, it has to be said, uh, other southern European countries such as Italy and Spain. So I'm hoping we can take that as a, you know, that we are responding well, that, that, that it is not, and it's not a competition. And it's, it's awful when it, it sounds like that, you know, that it's a competition to have the fewest deaths. But in a way it is, I suppose, um, you know, and we need to, as Stephanie just said there, flatten the curve and um, keep those numbers down. But um, yeah, as it seems to be saying there, uh, we are um, going, I mean, it's no res res surprise, is it, that you know, we're going to have to recover from this economically. Um, I think uh, one of the challenges here, I suppose, is is whether we are returning to business as usual, which would obviously mean a recession and a massive knockback for the economy and the sort of grim picture of, you know, the spectre of 2008 uh, rearing its ugly head. Or if we do something in this opportunity, something new, and we look at the economy in a new way. And I think, you know, for me, per this is a very personal opinion now, and I, and I take this sort of liberty towards the, the end of this of the show and this sort of more social community-based space where I invite you to share your opinions as well about the prognosis, you know, of us moving forward from here is how we need to perhaps do things 
uh, a little differently. You know, the, the, the massive reliance on tourism is obviously so precarious. And uh, for me, I would, I would love to see. Um, I, I was talking to somebody in Fundao uh, yesterday, an incredible company, actually, a mushroom um, Shimehito, I think they're called, in Fundao. And Fundao are doing some incredible stuff um, to uh, regenerate the interior uh, with, uh, with the help of a lot of um, European Union money and some very visionary thinking from their mayor to uh, regenerate the um, sort of deathly atmosphere uh, that you get in some parts of the Portuguese interior. And the irony for me is, is that, you know, in, with the right attention and the right focus, these places are really uh, sustainable, natural e economic scenarios uh, on a small scale, you know, when they're based on agriculture and that that agriculture can be respected properly. And, um, Good news until, you know, a couple of weeks ago, obviously, where they're, they're suffering in the same collective setback. But Fundal are really are quite an example of how we might focus on different industries and position people and commerce differently so that it's a little bit more resilient when shocks of this kind come along. Because I think in our bones, we knew some sort of shock was coming uh, economy wise. You can't just keep inflating these um, growth economies. Uh, something happens. But uh, I'm getting on my soapbox a little bit now. And would really like to hear from you. Um, and yeah, this will remain uh, what we do on a, on a weekday morning uh, from nine o'clock. Just uh, bring bring you the numbers and then create a space uh, so that there is a community communication, uh, you know, with the absence of local newspapers. And the added disadvantage, I suppose, if you're an expat or explorer or immigrant in Portugal and you couldn't read the newspapers, even if there were some, um, this could be um, a little bit of a network and a lifeline for people to communicate. So do bear that in mind. Uh, stay in touch as well via the Stay Positive Portugal uh, Facebook group that we have, um, which is, you know, in the times of uh, social, physical isolation and um, distancing, you know, that this social media is really coming into its own. Uh, and I'll do my best to keep you informed and also to try and keep you uplifted and positive. Uh, in these challenging times. Uh, so we're sharing pictures of our, our uh, food production and growth uh, from various parts of Portugal in there, which is good to see. And uh, any other good news is welcome, but also any cries for help, any needs for support, do share them here in the morning or on the Stay Positive Portugal uh, group as well. So I wish you a good day in these um, rather challenging circumstances. And let's see uh, what today brings us as we seem to be living uh, more and more on a day-to-day -day basis. So take care and bye for now and uh, probably we'll check in over the weekend in some form but uh, normal service of this kind will resume on monday so do take care and for what it's worth like bon fin de semana have a good weekend like it's all it's all like um a it feels like a weekend at the moment or to me it feels like there's only one day that just keeps repeating itself and i'm not complaining about that it's just you know how we how we see the world um, oh yeah just before we go um dawn says morning carl we've left uh, lagos as the air is now closed and we've made our way to Luli, which is a beautiful place, it has to be said, Dawn, uh, where we have been given the use of a friend's villa to continue our lockdown. What a, a lovely twist of fate for you there. I'm so glad that and that ended well. I, too, have noticed a lot of traffic going past, even though it's country lane. We have locked the gates so no one can come in. And in return, we are doing maintenance jobs, painting the out and painting the outside of the house. Yeah, it looks like a win-win there. Uh, dawn for you and i'm really glad your situation resolved uh, positively there so yeah sitting it out and um doing a bit of house sitting and um yeah hopefully there are moments aren't there when we forget about what's going on in the outside world and just get a sense of you know being connected to life and nature and that's a sort of merciful moment every now and then uh, i think you'll agree so yeah take care and uh, bye for now we'll, we'll see you over the weekend in some shape and like just like this again on monday bye for now